my name is uh, Jennifer Warhawk, and I thought I would maybe start a YouTube channel. Kind of a strange thing for me because I'm not a big fan of being on camera. I'm not a big fan of having my picture taken, and I'm really not a big fan of watching myself talk to nobody <laughs> except for a camera. And um, so it's kind of weird, but you know, for a really, really long time, I have felt like I wanted to get my story recorded somewhere, my life story. Um, maybe nobody will ever watch. Um, maybe only five people will ever watch, but if nothing else, maybe um, my children would appreciate this one day because to be perfectly honest, I feel like I'm probably too lazy to write a book. <laughs> and I'm not very talented. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a decent writer, but I'm just kind of lazy when it comes to finishing things. I'm, I'm good at starting things. I'm not very good at finishing things. I may not finish this YouTube channel. I may not even start the YouTube channel, but um, I'm going to at least get started doing something and get my story out some way, somehow. Um, so I think my YouTube channel is going to be called We All Have a Story, because we all do have a story. And mine will start with my story. Maybe one day, if I have people who actually watch, <laughs> maybe this will be a way for some people to get their story out. And um, you can send me your story and I will read your story. Um, my story has a lot of heartache, a lot of tragedy. Uh, maybe not a lot of straight up tragedy, um, but a lot of heartache. Um, a lot of pain, a lot of abuse. I think my channel, if I can get it going, will um, focus a lot on the topic of abuse because that's pretty much what I've lived with my whole life, except for now. As of right now, I have an abuse-free life for probably the first time in my life, and um, it's kind of different. It's definitely lonely for now. <laughs> Um, maybe one day it won't be lonely. Maybe it will always be lonely. But I would rather be lonely than be abused. So, if any of you out there feel the same way or are in a situation where you're afraid to leave an abuser because you're afraid um, of the loneliness, well, I will tell you it is real. But the loneliness in abuse Quite a bit worse than the loneliness out of it. So this, since this is a channel about my story, um, I will begin to tell my story. I'm going to literally start at the beginning because even my beginning was a little traumatic. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to go slowly and add in as much detail as I can. Maybe that'll be incredibly boring for everybody, but if it is, that's okay, because like I said, I think my ultimate goal here is for my own ability to heal, because sometimes it's easier to heal when you can get your story told. Um, and also for my children, whichever ones care enough to watch it or to um, have it available to them throughout their years. Um, as of right now, I have one child who hates me. <laughs> is not speaking to me. Um, he is 18, and um, we'll get to that. Maybe by the time we get to it, maybe all that will change. Wouldn't that be nice? So in the event that I get interrupted or you see me fiddling with something, I am currently fiddling with Rocky. <laughs> he will probably be present in a lot of my videos. He tends to follow me where I go, and he likes to um, be on my lap. So... If you see me fiddling, this is probably what I'm fiddling with. So my story, the beginning of my story. Um, I was born in 1975. I was born in Chicago Heights, Illinois. It was not a place of like, say, my heritage or whatever. It's, it was a place my dad was working. Um, I am from... Well, 
it's hard to say where I'm from because my dad was military we moved a lot but he didn't go in the military until I was seven so from the time I was two months old to the time that I was seven we lived in my hometown of DeSoto Missouri I guess that's my hometown I kind of consider Colorado Springs my hometown right now because I spent a whole lot more time here than I did in um, DeSoto but so I was born premature, I believe, or before my term. I don't know if it was completely premature, but um, I had a condition or the pregnancy, there was a condition in the pre pregnancy called placenta previa, which I guess that's where the placenta starts separating from um, the womb. And of course, if that happens, then all kinds of terrible things happen. So. Um, I was born by C-section, and apparently when I was born, I don't know why, I was seemed to remember someone telling me that I was upside down and backwards, <laughs> but I do, guess it didn't matter all that much because I was born by C-section rather than by regular birth, and for some strange reason, at least according to the story that I re think I've heard throughout the years, that I had a collapsed lung when I was born. I have no idea why nobody ever and ever bothered to ask why I don't know why maybe I should do that um, but anyway apparently I had a collapsed lung and I spent the first two months of my hmm, what's kind of conflicting information I've always heard that I spent the first couple months of my life in the hospital because I wouldn't eat or couldn't eat or something um, but then I also know that I was told that when I was about two months old we moved from Chicago Heights to DeSoto, Missouri, which is, you know, or roughly DeSoto, Missouri, which is where all my family's from. So I don't know. I, I was there, but, you know, wasn't really there <laughs> mentally. So um, I guess I spent some time in the ICU or something for a while after I was born. And um, that's the reason why I have no younger siblings. Apparently, um, it was originally planned that they were, that my parents were going to have four children. But since my mother had such a hard time with my pregnancy and my birth, I don't know about the pregnancy, but the birth, um, they decided not to have any more children, which makes me kind of sad. I would really love to have younger siblings. Always my whole life wanted a sister. For a brief period of time, I had a stepsister. It wasn't that brief, it was a number of years, but um, I did have a stepsister. But anyway, so I ended up in, you know, as a young infant from what I heard the day that okay so moved from from Chicago Illinois to DeSoto and nothing really to tell there um, my parents lived in a trailer park I heard and um, they moved out of their trailer park and into the home that I remember as a child on the day that Elvis died <laughs> um, it's kind of I don't know I just had had to process that for some reason I don't know why I was a big Elvis fan for about a one or two year period of time and uh, so anyway the day Elvis died we moved into my childhood home a little home in Olympian Village which is uh, kind of like it's considered its own little city there in DeSoto I don't know if you can well the address was not Olympian Village the address was Route 4 box 504 DeSoto, Missouri, 63020. Of course, they changed all that Route 4 box something or other later on, and now it's the street I lived on was Parthenon Drive, so now the addresses are actually by street number, street name. Not like that's interesting, I know. But, <laughs> uh, Route 4, box 504, DeSoto, Missouri, 63020 was my very first address. And, um, you know, my time from my first memory to the time when we left that house was pretty pretty good days. Um, my mother worked during the day as a phlebotomist and my dad worked at night on the railroad and so he took care of us during the day and we ate a lot of chicken and dumplings and hamburgers, <laughs> canned chicken and dumplings and hamburgers. Those were um, my childhood meals for my dad. That's about all he could really do. It's all he really wanted to do but we were happy. It was fine. We loved chicken and dumplings and we loved hamburgers so it was good. We played outside a lot. Um, it was Missouri, so it was warm most of the year. Um, you know, I had a little friend that was a little, little bit younger than me that lived next door that I grew up next to, and her name was also Jennifer. 
and um, and then my brother, she had a brother that was roughly my brother's age. My brother is older. He's uh, two years and nine months older than me, and he's my only sibling, and um, we'll get to that later too, maybe much later, I don't know, but um, so, you know, it was good days. You know, I ran around with bare feet and no shirt. I was kind of a tomboy. I was little, you know, I was little, so I didn't do that when I got bigger, but there was a time when I became conscious of that sort of thing, but when I was little, I ran around like a boy, you know, and had fun, and uh, we lived... Kind of like so our house was you know we had a house and then we had a really 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 big backyard and um right at the end of our backyard was a drop off <laughs> into a i don't know it was there was woods down in there um but the immediately behind our house it wasn't it was kind of an open space and i i guess they've put houses back there now but when i was a kid there weren't any houses back actually there was i think there was one house down there um, but it was all wooded except for a little bit of a clearing right behind our house. And we'd go down there and play and we'd be in the woods. We'd be running in the woods, you know, or running around the neighborhood back in the seventies. You know, it was awesome. Kids could run around and nobody cared. And it was a small little community. So everybody knew each other. Everybody knew the kids and knew, you know, kept track of where they were. The seventies was a good time to grow up. Seventies and eighties. I really envy, or I really feel bad for my children having to grow up in this day and age. Um, but anyway, so everything was good until my dad got laid off from the army. And when he got laid off from the army, that kind of changed everything for us. Um, not right away, but shortly. Um, I do remember when my dad got, sorry, dad got laid off from the railroad. He went into the army because he got laid off from the railroad. And um, I remember because my dad said, you know, because we lived in a little small town. And that small town, if you didn't work on the railroad, you'd have to go all the way to St. Louis to work. And um, that was a, about an hour or so away. Yeah, maybe not an hour. Maybe 45 minutes, depending on where you worked in St. Louis. And uh, apparently my dad, I don't know if he just couldn't find work or just was just like, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to go in the Army. Well, I remember in my little seven-year-old brain, I remember thinking... My dad's going to go in the army and he's going to get killed. He's going to go to war and he's going to die. <laughs> and I was pretty terrified. I was really scared. I did not want my dad to go in the army. Because, you know, my dad was there with me every day, you know. Um, he worked at night and my dad was going to go off to boot camp. And I'd never been separated from my dad before. And I'm getting emotional thinking about it because I don't realize until I've never really spoken out loud about it, I don't think. But I remember, I can feel the feelings, I can feel the emotions that I had back then. I was scared, and I didn't want my dad to go. Um, yeah, so he went off to boot camp, and uh, he was gone for however long that was, a couple months. And I remember going down to his graduation, and um, I remember when I saw him for the first time, and I, you know, and I asked him, I was like, how long were you gone, Dad? I think he said two months or maybe three months. I think he said three months. And I was like, oh, it felt like three years. And I remember, uh, actually before that, I remember seeing him march in with his company and they were doing the, uh, they had this kind of chant that they were doing and I saw my dad walk by. And I was only seven, but I saw the look on his face. My dad has never been a joiner kind of person. Like, so like this whole military mentality where everyone's doing this, sound off one two blah 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 and he just i could tell he hated that just look see the look on his face that he thought it was the dumbest thing ever because they were what they were saying and i'm sure i have it a little bit wrong but as they were marching in they were saying something like auf in gawa we got the charlie pow or auf in gawa <laughs> my dad was like you could just the look on his face he hated it absolutely hated it. he was so embarrassed but anyway so i told him it felt like three years and and then I guess he must have gone off to whatever training they go to, but I don't remember that. I have no memory of him going off for another period of time. I don't know. Maybe he didn't, but I'm sure he did. He had to have. But anyway, um, from that point, his first duty station was Fort Carson, Colorado. So 1983, I guess it was. Um, we pack up the house, which was terrifying for me because I don't remember ever moving before and I was excited. No, I take that back. I remember being excited because they told me that Colorado had mountains and I'd never seen mountains before. 
And so I was actually really excited until they started packing up my room. I, I seem to remember, oh no, I don't remember, actually I don't remember the packing. It must have been in school. I don't even remember the boxes. There had been boxes, but I don't remember. Um, I, but I, what I do remember is I had what was called a, a kitchen set. So uh, all along one wall of my bedroom was like a little kid-sized fridge and a little kid-sized sink and a little kid-sized stove and maybe even a kid-sized dishwasher, I'm not sure. But I loved my kitchen set, loved it. And I couldn't take it to Colorado with me. That was pretty devastating. I, re I remember being there when my kitchen set was in the driveway and someone came and I guess picked it up or something, I don't know. But I was, oh, that was pretty, pretty heartbreaking. But it didn't last long because once we got on the road to Colorado, I was super excited because um, we'd taken trips before, which you know what? I've missed a lot because I've never, I didn't talk about my trips to Florida. So yeah, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about some of the trips that we took to Florida before my dad got laid off from the railroad. Because my mother's parents lived down in Orlando or one of the places around Orlando. I don't know if it was exactly Orlando. It might have been Winter Haven or something like that. Um, if that's around Orlando, I don't know. But they lived somewhere in that area. And um, we would go, we went to visit them a couple of times. And I just remember thinking those were the best trips ever. Because of course, your grandparents, you know, I had great grandparents. I have to say, um, my dad's parents um, were, I was much closer to, I spent much more time with because they lived there in DeSoto with us. And we saw them, we were at their house all week, you know, all weekend. And Grandma Hawkins was just my person you know i loved my grandma hawkins all the way until she died in 2013 and uh, my grandpa was amazing grandpa hawkins and then my grandparents down in florida were grandma and grandpa walsh and um they were really cool too they were good to us they were always sweet grandpa was a very kind-hearted man he was but he had a big voice you know he was loud and you know and he scared the scared the daylights out of me because his thing was, you know, when we were being a little bit too rowdy, he'd look at us, he'd go, plant it, <laughs> which means sit down. And we would s sit down because we were terrified of his big voice, but he was such a big teddy bear. You know, he, he never harmed us or never really yelled at us. Uh, I can remember one time when he yelled at us, but this is getting ahead of myself. Slow down. So at one point they actually moved to DeSoto, but not yet. So we're down in Florida. Wonder if my grandpa had orange trees in his backyard. I feel like, because he lived in two different houses, because they lived in Orlando, then they came to DeSoto and lived for a little bit, then they went back to Orlando. I'm pretty sure both houses, he had fruit trees in his backyard. I mean, grapefruit trees in his backyard. And um, I remember just running through the sprinklers in his backyard, and it was just green and lush and tropical, and it was just, their house was really nice. You know, I mean, it wasn't like, man, you know, they were comfortably well off. You know, they weren't rich by any means at all, but they were comfortable. And they had a nice middle-class home and uh, beautiful trees in the backyard and sprinklers. And my grandpa, both of my grandparents, the men were just like meticulous about their yards. I mean, their yards were always just beautiful. So he had this lush green grass. I remember because where we lived, our yard was so big, we couldn't really like you know, worry about the grass that much. My dad kept it well trimmed and everything, but we couldn't really worry a lot about the grass because there's just so much yard there. But my grandpa Walsh had a smaller yard and his grass was just like the blades of grass were like that and they were wide and thick and just putting your feet, it was nice and cool on your feet. And, um, you know, it would be a little, always be a little wet because they always were watering the yard and it was just, I don't know, I just, the. <laughs> these feelings, these sensations that I remember from childhood. Um, and my grandpa, when he was in Florida, always had a, a sunroom. And my grandpa always sat in the sunroom. I mean, he never, I never, I don't think I ever saw him sit, sit on a couch, like ever. He always sat in the sunroom at the table with his bottle of uh, can, like 16 ounce can of bush beer. And he always had a spit cup. I don't know why, but he always had to spit. And it was like phlegmy, kind of gross spit. I remember if he'd let it get too full, I'd kind of like look at it like a deer in the headlights, like, ugh, it's so gross, yuck. But he always had his spit, his spit cup, his 16 ounce can of bush beer. He was drink, drink bush beer all day long. 
but you'd never know he was, I mean, I don't think he was ever drunk. I think it was just his beverage of choice and he drank it like a beverage and I really don't think that he was ever drunk. Um, he never behaved like he was drunk. He was never overly happy or overly angry. He was just normal keel and, um, but always had that bush beer and probably cigarettes, Paul Mall cigarettes. Well, my grandma smoked Paul Mall cigarettes. I don't know if my grandpa did. I can't remember what he smoked, but he smoked something. Um, and grandma always had her chair in the living room and she always had her glass of water. She was a water drinker. It must be where I get it from because I love water. And she always had her glass of water and her cigarettes, her Pall Mall cigarettes. And the one thing I can always remember is her picking tobacco off her tongue. That's just like a memory that I have of her. And um, my kitty cat jarred my camera. Let me go. So I don't know. Is this completely boring? Are you Are you ridiculously bored right now? Should I keep these to like 20 minutes so you don't fall asleep? Or should I make them longer? I don't know. Maybe I'll just stop this very first video at 21 minutes or whatever it is until I finish. And we'll pick up next time at my grandparents' house in Florida. And, um, I mean, I have a lot to tell. Everybody does. I mean, I've got 47 years of life. And I really want to be detailed about telling my story. And I think it's because... Well, one, like I've already said, I think it's the third time I've said it now, I'd like for my children to have something um, to have when I'm gone. And um, and because there's there's a lot of abuse, abuse in my life. There's a lot. And I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to be very candid about it. And I just want others to hear the stories and um, and, you know, feel like, you know, that they can relate and that they are not alone, you know, and that if they want to tell me their story, I'd be happy to hear it, happy to tell about it once I get through mine. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to take many videos because I, like I said, I want to be detailed. So, so I think I'll end this first video and try to remember to pick up at Grandma and Grandpa Walsh's house in Orlando. Man, I can think of so many things. I'm probably gonna have to write things down. So I have a feeling I'm going to forget them and have to go backwards and forwards. And well, anyway, it'll happen how it happens. So I hope this is something that you're interested in. Um, if so, you know, could you give me a like? Give, I, I hate it when people do this. <laughs> please like my page. Please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell. It's like I know what to do on YouTube already. Why do you have to remind me? But if reminding you means that I'm that you're actually going to do it, then I guess I'll have to do the whole YouTube. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please hit the notification bell. I kind of hate that. <laughs> but maybe I'll do the little dealios, you know, where it just says, you know, you see the little hand and the little subscribe thing, so I don't have to say it all the time. Um, anyway, you tell me. Do you like it? Is, you know, I've never actually heard anybody complain about that, but I've always hated it. I've always been like, oh yeah, I know. I've been watching YouTube for a really long time. I know that you want me to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I know it. But anyway, I think I will call it a day, call it a video. And little Mr. Rocky is about done with his bath. He's been bathing the whole time. Oh, my little Rocky. I love him so much. He's my good boy. And he's only one of two kitties and I got three dogs. I used to have 18 chickens, but I've recently gotten rid of them. That'll come at a much later thing but so thank you for watching if you've gotten this far and haven't fallen asleep and if you did watch and didn't fall asleep if you'd want to leave me a comment so I know that I, I really need some feedback I need to know if I'm talking too much if I'm being very boring if my if I'm too detailed if I'm not detailed enough if you have questions ask questions and I'll answer them um, I just you know I just wanted to get started and your feedback will help me figure out where to go from here. So with that, I bid you adieu and have a wonderful week. And I hope not a single person re watching my video is experiencing abuse of any kind at this moment. And if so, I will pray for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray for whoever is watching my video who is experiencing abuse. Please, Lord, protect them and give them guidance on how they can get out of their situation. And please, um, um, show them your love and your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.